Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's a big day. We've got a new rifle here to show you. And um, we're going to do the same thing with this rifle right now that we did with the Petter Solis. We're going to determine our max overall cartridge length. We're going to determine the null spot on our barrel. And we're going to get a four slug so we can figure out what our cast bullet diameter needs to be. Come on in here and let's have a look at this Shiloh Sharps 4570. Okay, so the first thing I've got here is I've got a bullet that I'm going to use. This profile bullet right here. This is what's called a new Postel bullet. I got this um, from a mold I got from Steve Brooks in Montana. I'll put a link to uh, his website down in the description below. You guys, if you're looking for a bullet mold, man, you can do way worse than getting a Brooks mold. I'll tell you that right now. So anyway, this bullet has not been sized. Um, this is a 540 grain bullet and it has a, a shortened up profile. The first two bands are on this are reduced. Um, that's for shooting with 4570s because you're constantly, you're going to be constantly holding that bullet out of the case. Um, actually, I've got a loaded round right here I can show you. This is what my loaded ammo looks like and you can see that I've got two lube groups fully exposed. And that's to get more powder in the case, obviously. The 4570 case being only 2.1 inches long, your powder capacity is really diminished. Um, compared to the other black powder, black powder calibers. So um, that's one trick to get a little more powder in there and a little more velocity. So to do that, we've got to know, well, how long can we make it, right? So we're just going to take our raw bullet and stick it in the chamber. Just get it in there. And then I've got a short piece of dowel right here. And I'm just going to push it in until it hits the lands. And You'll know when it's hit the lands because you won't be able to push it anymore. So then I'll just take this little guy and just tap it a little bit, right? Not too much, but I want it to I want it to be on the lands and seated. So then I've got my 3 8 inch oak dowel from Home Depot or whatever big box store you like best. Believe me, I'm I'm not beholden to those guys, but I'm going to put it in the barrel until it hits the nose of the bullet. And then, being very careful, make sure it's all the way on there. I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to take a pencil, sharpened up pencil, and I'm going to hold it right here on the bore, nice and flat. And right on that dowel, and I'm going to rotate the dowel 360. So that I just made myself a pencil line on this piece of wood. Okay? Make sure it's a good one. Get it on there. Get a nice pencil line you can see. Okay, and here I'll show you real quick. There's my pencil line right there, right? So, let's take and put our wood dowel back in the rifle. Pull this piece of dowel out, and I am now going to punch that bullet out of there. And I can put this back. I don't need it for anything else. Um, and I'm going to close the action. Make sure that the hammer is on the half cock. When you manipulate the action on a sharps, the hammer should always be on half cock. It should never be down. Um, because you can inadvertently put tension on the firing pin and cause it to stick out of the block. And then you raise the block up and down on the rear of the chamber and you could shear the end of the firing pin off. It's a trick I've learned and it, uh, I've heard it from too many sources now. I know it's credible. So just bottom out your dowel in against your block in here. And do the same thing again. We're going to make another line going all the way around this wood dowel. And there we go. And obviously we know that doing it with a piece of wood and a pencil like this, um, the results, it's not going to be totally exact, right? Like this isn't accurate down to the last thousandth of an inch, but this does give us a really good starting point. So let's just take our, our dial caliper here. And we're going to measure as best we can from edge to edge. This tells me that my max overall cartridge length is going to be 1, 2, 2.955. That's what that says. Sorry, 2.955 inches. 
is my max total max available space that I can use now this ammo that I already had loaded up for the Petter Soli is actually a little bit longer see that oh sorry here you go um, the nose of the bullet is significantly overhanging that the end of this caliper right here so um, tells me that the yeah this this now that goes back to Shiloh rifle having a tighter chamber than a Petter Soli and I thought about doing a video um, talking about a, a side by side comparing the Shiloh to the Petter Soli and what the differences really are but one of the things that's going to come out is going to be this right here which I'm just, I'm going to have to show you um, the ammo that seats in my Petter Soli just fine hangs out the end of the Shiloh right here and I would have to use a camming tool to force that into the chamber so that's one thing right there so now let's move on and get our null point all right so I've got my rifle and I'm holding it up by the wrist right here and I'm going to tap that barrel and you can hear the sound get flatter and flatter and flatter till you hit that null point hear how flat that is right there and you can feel it in your hand too when I tap it right here there's almost no vibration I can't feel a thing in my left hand but when I tap it up here it's like a drum up here in my in my fingers I can feel it so and I'm right there that spot is about four inches in front of the end of my forearm so that's where I'm gonna put my handy dandy piece of blue tape that I cut and you'll see guys and sometimes you'll see them have a piece of blue tape on their rifle or sometimes they'll have a piece of black electricians tape up here because they don't want nobody to know what they're doing right well now you know what they're doing right that's the null point on their barrel so anytime I'm now resting this rifle on cross sticks or a bench rest or anything else and I want to shoot it's gonna rest right on this spot because that's what's gonna give me my best accuracy because that means that as the barrels vibrating as a bullet rolls down the barrel if you rest it on this spot right here it will impact your accuracy the least all right so we've got our barrel right here and we're just going to take a round pure lead ball drop it right there and i'm going to use a small hammer that i got i got this hammer and i want to this is a steel hammer and i, I do not want this hammer to contact that muzzle at all so I'm going to tap it in a little, enough to get her started. And when it starts to flatten out like that and starts getting pretty close, well that's when I'm going to take my wood dowel and put it on there. And now I'm going to continue on tapping. All right, we're going to get that in there. And it's going to go in the bore. And so now I've poked it in the bore there about a good eh, three quarters of an inch. And that's the dimension that I'm kind of looking for is what the barrel, what the bore diameter down here is. So I'm going to take the rifle and chuck it back up in the vise and we're going to poke that sucker out and see what it says. Okay, so I've got the rifle chucked back up and I've got my wood dowel going in from the breech end this time. And I'm going to use it and just tap this slug out just like that. Okay, so I've got my caliper. This is a really nice Mitutoyo caliper that I got. I really like this thing. Um, we're going to open it up and we're going to measure the slug on this bore. And I kind of already know that this thing's gonna this slug is gonna be a bit smaller than the slug on the Petter Soli rifles. Um, Shilohs have that reputation. So we're gonna tighten her up. So we're at oops. we're getting very close. 
So right there, it's holding on barely. And I want you to see that number right there. That number is 45680. Four, okay. Ooh, see, it almost fell out. Um, that means that this barrel is a little less than 457 diameter. That means that the max cast bullet size we would run through this barrel is 459. And I actually uh, ran this. I, I, this is the second slug I've put. Here's the first slug that I ran. Um, I ordered a 458 slug, or not slug, sorry. I ordered a 458 sizing die. Um, to test out with this rifle and I'm gonna have to test bullets in both sizes 458 and 459 and that's based on the information I got from the former owner of this rifle and also information that I got from Lucinda at Shiloh um, they recommend a they recommend a 0.458 sizing die so there we go. That's a major, major difference from the Pedersoli rifles as well because my Pedersoli that I was shooting really liked bullets size 460. Um, so that's a two thousandths difference right there. So now we got a difference in bore diameter and we've got a difference in the chamber length. And we're going to get to that here in just a second too. All right. So there's another little trick here that I want you guys to know about. And that is to figure out the depth of your chamber and to how long your brass can really be in your rifle. Now, in a single shot rifle like this, if, if you're shooting a Shiloh Sharps, then I'm just going to assume straight up that you are a hand loader. And furthermore, you're not a beginning hand loader either. You're a very experienced hand loader. Um, and what I'm going to do now is... You can measure a couple different ways with a caliper. You can measure here, but you can also measure here, right? And what I'm doing is I'm fishing this guy in there, and I'm finding the transition from chamber to bore, okay? And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to keep scooching this guy till I find it. It's just a little bump, right? There it is, right there. So I'm going to scoot her down a little more until, whoop, come back. This takes a little bit of fooling around, and it's not as exact as doing a chamber cast, which I think I may do on this rifle. But, There it is right there. It's kind of a hassle to do because the thing doesn't want to do it. There it is. This is telling me that my chamber is 2, 2, 1, 1 inches deep. Now the commonly given max overall length for 4570 brass is 2.1 inches. The, the official name of the cartridge is 45-2.1, right? And this chamber is cut to the, exactly that size. And what that tells me is that I don't want to ever trim my brass down to something below 2.1 inches. In fact, I really want my brass to grow a little bit and get to maybe 2.108, something like that, right? And that's a pretty important thing to know. Uh, I think when you're really starting to work with a rifle for its ultimate long-range potential is exactly how long your chamber is. Now, I'm going to verify this with a chamber cast. I'm going to get my gunsmith buddy Dave to help me with that, and we're going to make that its own video. But that's just something to file away in our, in our noggins right now. We need to know. We know we have an idea that our chamber is long. Now, the Pedersoli rifles... The chamber's even longer, and further on, Pedersolis are known to have a good amount of free bore at the end of the chamber. This is another difference. The chambers on Shilohs are much tighter. The barrels are tighter. Um, both companies make their own barrels. Um, Shiloh even goes so far as that they foundry their own steel in Montana. 
Uh, I don't think Petter Soli foundries their own steel, but they do make their own barrels, and they've their barrels have won a lot of stuff. I'm not trying to denigrate Petter Soli at all, but I, it's a difference that I have to know um, in order to use this rifle. So there you have it, right there. So I've learned I've learned some things. I got my null point. I got my bore diameter slug. I figured out my overall length, and I figured out the length of the chamber. So, let's take this bad boy to the range and send some rounds down range and just see what we can do. So here's something I'm going to do real quick. I think you guys are going to like this trick. We're going to figure out what kind of barrel twist we have on this rifle. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm taking my same 3 8 dowel rod, and I got a big old patch here. And we're going to stick this into the bore. Because it's going to get real tight. Hard to even push in there, right? So I'm going to get down in here onto kind of a clean part of the wood where I haven't marked up yet. And I'm going to make me some marks. I'm going to mark up this piece of wood right here so I know right where I'm starting at. Right? And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I always do and I'm going to pin that pencil right there. Okay, so that I make a mark and I'm going to start pushing this dowel into the bore. And these barrels have a right hand twist, so at least going from the bore end they do. So I want to make sure that I did not screw with I didn't hold the thing and force it to go straight, in other words. I allowed it to turn, right? Ooh, my patch came off in there, so I'm just punch that out the other end. But now what I've got is I have a starting mark, and I've got a spiral pencil line all the way around this piece of dowel. So let's measure this up and see what it says. Okay, so this is going to be kind of convoluted, but basically what we've done is we made a corkscrew pencil mark around this wood dowel and from where I got which is the start of my mark until the thing comes around full circle again I've got one rotation in 18 inches and I know this is really screwed up it's hard to see but here's the important part right here where the tape measure says 18 and you can see that line crossing it's an 18 inch twist barrel um, I was really hoping that this thing had a 16 twist barrel because that means I would be able to stabilize heavier bullets but it didn't happen so uh, it's an 18 twist and that ex that means I'm actually running the right bullet in it right now so let's get back and have a last final look at this thing before we head to the range so I'd like to thank you guys for stopping in and checking out this new rifle um, I've got another video coming right up where we got this thing at the range and we're just sending some ammo and it's just it's kind of random black powder ammo I had we're burning it up and having fun um, but this thing we're there's a lot of big plans for this rifle ahead this is going to be our new silhouette competition rifle so thanks for watching the channel uh, thanks for dropping by recoil therapy we'll see y'all again here real soon